Okay, that sounds good. Um, okay, let's start 515. Let's get the uh, budget budget meeting number one started. Um, could we stand for the pledge, please? I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, to the republic, and to the republic for which it stands, which it stands one, one nation, nation under, under God, God. Indivisible. Indivisible. indivisible, indivisible, liberty, liberty, liberty and justice, and justice for all. <laughs> Thank you. Lee, could you do a roll call for us, please? Yes. Councilman Scurry. Present. Councilwoman Resnetti. Present. Councilwoman Riley. Present. Councilwoman Friedman. Present. Councilman Burns. Present. Uh, Chairman Strong. Present. And President Scammon. Present. That's all seven here. Okay, thanks Lee, appreciate it. Thanks everybody for being here. Um, I'm just gonna go over things real quick. I know there's five of us on, well, Sophia kind of went through one before, but five of us that are new, including me. So um, I think we've all worked together and bear with us through this process. I think it's gonna go very smoothly. Just a couple quick points as I see them. Um, spend some time with Ken on the phone Friday, which I really appreciate his time to, to help me through a few things. Um, basically, he made a good point to us. I just want to point out that this is an opportunity for us to go through this budget, basically line by line, to speak into it if, if we want to, to ask some questions of the presenters. Um, but it is not te technically an obligation. We, uh, if we do, do not pass a budget ordinance by October 30th, then this budget goes by default to as it sits as the mayor presented it. So. We have an opportunity over these next couple of weeks. Our time frame is condensed a little bit because um, the people of the city, by the way, worked very hard to get it to this point with information that was coming or not coming. They weren't sure something came, some things didn't. Um, we're hoping that some more information comes from the federal government after the election. But as we sit here today, we don't, don't know that. So I wanna thank Chuck and Lori and all the people of the city for their hard work to get us to this point. Um, and as the presenters come on, I just would encourage us to honor their time and, um, and ask questions as appropriate. But this is a time for us to focus on the budget, not on the process necessarily. Um, but I'm going to be taking notes just like everybody else, because some of these things are going to prompt process questions that are great questions for another time to call back the presenter, or call the city department head and say, hey, when you were going through the budget, I, I heard this, but wasn't the time to talk about that then. But I encourage you to take notes on the process part as we go through this as well. But let's really focus on the budget. Um, the total budget that we're looking at as presented by the mayor is uh, for all funds is just over $97 million. Um, last year, the total funds, all funds was just under $97 million. So it's, that's less than a half a percent increase over all funds. Um, the fund, uh, the, the all funds were balanced last, or are proposed to be balanced this year by $4 million, just over $4 million in fund balance and $221,000 in reserves balanced after the revenues and tax levy. Um, as opposed to last year, fund balance balanced it at just over 2 million and reserves of just over 1 million. Uh, the general fund is actually presented as a small decrease from last year. Um, that tells me that the city's worked really, really hard to keep things in check and keep things in line with a lot of unknowns and a lot of uh, things things that, that are unknown. So um, that's kind of my commendation. We're going to, op I'm gonna open the pages um, for tonight by presenter. Um, tomorrow night we have a couple that will be open by presenter and fund, but tonight we're gonna open all the pages by presenter and then we're gonna work together to approve those pages logically. The first few people, that's not, not too bad. And then when we get down a little bit, we'll just decide how we wanna group the approvals of the pages. So with that said, I'd like to, to, to welcome John Sperduti, and I'd like to open pages 19 and 20 as we get this thing kicked off. Hey, good evening, council people. Um, this is my first budget review, so bear with me. I'm a novice, so I'm not sure how this proceeds, but I can tell you um, uh, that um, the personal services um, were uh, 
same as last year. Um, there is no change um, in personnel. Um, office supplies remain consistent um, from year to year, as well as the envelope supply. Um, the big change to my budget was the movement of budget lines for the parking uh, kiosk and fees and service from uh, Lori Cliff's department to my department. Um, so that is the increase that you will see uh, in my budget and the decrease from her budget. And those are the ones located at the bottom of page 19, um, including the kiosk fees, the credit card fees, receipts, et cetera. Are there any questions on this page? Yes, this is Councilwoman Friedman. Hello, Councilperson Friedman. Hi. Um, thank you for for being here. Also, my first budget process, so we're all in this together. Um, I just had a question about the the annual fees for the kiosks, or um, let's see. Sorry, I wrote a note here. So is that that is that's not an installation fee. That's this is something that we would have to pay every year. Yeah, that, are, yeah, that's the software. If you're looking at the annual SW fees, that's the software licensing. Oh, okay. Thank you. You're welcome. There, so even, well, there is a new fee out what? there, uh, preventative maintenance of uh, $12,000, I think it is, and parts and labor of $21,000, and extended parts of $32,000 uh, since the Kiosk are off warranty now. I'm sorry, I missed the very last part of your sentence. They're off, the, the kiosks are now off warranty, so we had to add roughly $60,000 to this budget uh, to get the annual maintenance on there that the machines deserve. Okay, great. Thank you for the clarification. Okay, this is Councilwoman Riley again. Um, because it moved from Lori Cliff's budget, we should then have an encumbered or expended amount opposed to zero, correct? Not the way the system works. The system only takes that account number. Since this is a new account number in this budget, you don't see it. If you went to Lori's account number, we could get that number. Can you can you tell us where that is so we can have a better understanding of what the expenses were and how what was proposed last year? Can you hear me? I hear you. I'm looking at it. I would oh, encourage okay, everybody to mute if they're not speaking, if, they, if that's okay. Last year, uh, that whole line came in at $100,000 uh, on total expenses. This year, we're averaging up through the end of, I think, September, but I'm not sure. Sixty-one thousand with another forty thousand encumbered, so it'll be about a hundred thousand dollars. And Chuck, this is Angela, Councilwoman Riley, once again. What was uh, budgeted for this line last year? One hundred and twenty-three thousand. So does this include the new parking facility as well? Is that why? I know you mentioned. No, no, this, no. There's no difference in the parking facilities. This sixty thousand is for the kiosk machines out on the street. Okay. We're adding sixty thousand dollars to do maintenance on them instead of paying as you go, which could be very expensive. Thank you for that clarification. And there were no other changes in the other lines, Councilperson Riley, as well, from last year. Okay, any other questions on 
Did you, uh, uh, 19, you want to go to page 20? Go to page 20. Yes, you should talk about 19 and 20 together. 19 and 20. Yeah. Okay, so on page 20, we see the professional service fee um, that's for our, park, uh, our parking ticket <coughs> system. We have switched to a new vendor this year from Complus, who provided our service uh, up until September 1st, and we've gone with FBS, a new service provider. Uh, just a side fact, um, and uh, the equipment and repair and maintenance line remains the same from year to year. This is Councilman Friedman. I have a question. Councilwoman, just a reminder to everybody, if you're not speaking, please make sure you're muted. Otherwise, we get an echo. I'm sorry, Councilwoman. That's okay. Yeah, I heard myself ask that question three times in the echo. Um, so the um, I'm I'm just a little bit confused because so I understand that we switched to a new vendor, um, but was it were the fees from the previous vendors on a different line, or wh why are there now? Um, why is there now $55,000 in the budget where previously there was no money allocated? It's similar to the previous page, Councilperson. This, this was transferred to me from Lori Cliff's department. It, it was in her budget last year, or this year. This is Lori. It made more sense to, when, when we first instituted these programs, I ran it as we did the implementation. Now that everything's up and running and working the right way, we've moved it to the department that actually will oversee the fees and the usage of the kiosks and the parking ticket system. And for the professional services, last year I budgeted, hold on, let me find it. I think it was 62.5, Lori. 62.5 last year. With the change in vendor, it's going to cost us less for that same service. So we decreased the budget from 62.5 to 55,000. And then the other detail line on that professional service is the staff fees. When we, when someone has too many parking tickets, we're allowed to scoff them through New York State to take their registration. And this is the fee we have to pay New York State as we do that. Okay, thank you. So the reason why there there is no um, there's no money in previous years is because this is a new budget line since it was transferred from a different department. Is that correct? That is correct. Gotcha. Okay, thank you. Okay, any other questions on pages nineteen and twenty? Okay, can we get a motion to approve pages 19 and 20? Mr. Chairman. Make a motion Mike. to approve pages 19 and 20. Okay. Second. Okay. We don't have to take a roll call on every one of these that we approve, right? No, what, what we usually do is a voice vote, right? And then if there are any negatives, we will ask who are the negatives. So just say all okay. in favor. Okay, all in favor of approving pages 19, 20? Aye. 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 Okay, those are good. Any, um, I'd like to open it. Anything, anybody opposed? Okay, um, I'd like to open pages, uh, page 28. Is uh, Trish Kepler available? Yes, I'm here. Okay, thanks Trish, go ahead. Okay, there weren't a lot of changes to my budget uh, for next year. Very minor under temporary services. Um, we were able to go down just a little bit, $1,000 on that line. Um, over time, we did go up by 500 only because that is to deal with civil service exams. And for 2021, we expect many more exams to be held because so many were canceled for this year. Um, so we felt there was a need to increase to cover that for next year. 
Um, legal ads and advertising, we cut back $1,000 there because we, for any jobs that we advertise, we use all free advertising. We didn't need to have as much in there. Travel and training, the supervisory training is not continuing. Um, so we took that out. And that's it. Okay. Any questions for, for Trish on uh, page 28? Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion yeah, to move I, page 28. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. This is Councilman Friedman. Go ahead, Councilman. Thank you. Uh, I just was wondering uh, about the, the printing line that there's nothing budgeted there when in previous years there was, there was money there. Right. We don't need um, anything for that. We can do everything that we do through our own printer and computer. So we don't need to send anything out anymore. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay. Um, Councilman Scaringi, did you make a motion to approve page 28? Yes, Chairman. Okay. We have a second. Second. Okay. All in favor? Approving page 28? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay. Thank you, Trish. I appreciate it. Um, I'm going to now open pages one, page 22, and 196 and 197. Um, do we have Margaret Myers on, on the line? Yes, I'm here. Okay, go ahead. Okay, the on the real property, that's I've never done this. I've never done this before. Scott was always there, so I'm kind of new at this. Um, the different rules are on the left, the real property, public service, railroad, special franchise, wholly exempt. Um, I'm the one who deals with the real property section, that is the taxable section. Uh, the public service one is the utilities, which is the NISAG. Uh, the railroad ceiling, those are also set by the state. Special franchises also, which is the tele -wire, telephone wires and the fiber optic. Uh, whole exempt is number eight, which would be city of Binghamton, uh, New York State, and the county, schools, nonprofits, and churches. Um, and then there's the tax levy. Uh, I don't know what other information you need on this page. Margaret, let, let me just speak up here a little bit. This is Chuck. Thank you. Uh, this, the valuations you see here, the city tax bill values is what we use to set the tax rates. Um, so as those things fluctuate, that could affect the actual uh, rates year to year. And as an example, the total assessments went down last year. And I don't know the exact amount, but it took $165,000 to start start off just to get to a zero tax rate increase. Okay, does anybody have any questions on page one? Okay, why don't you go ahead to page tw uh, 22. Okay, um, the amount of pay has gone down because Scott has retired and I, and it's, I've taken over and we actually had two new employees and so overall the ink, the pay rate has gone down. Um, Office equipment, we don't need very much at this point, so we actually went down. Um, 
just in case we do need something. Office supplies, uh, we've gone down a thousand or a hundred dollars. Um, we don't need as much as certain items, and I want to make sure it's covered for what's going on with COVID. So the printing has gone down because New York has taken over most of the enhanced star exemptions. So they've been sending those out. So I don't need as many envelopes as I would in previous years. Um, appraisal service, we went down slightly. Um, don't know if we're gonna need the whole amount or not. We have to wait and see for Article 7s and certs. Um, dues have gone up. That's just has the way the, the New York State and Broome County has gone up. Uh, travel and tra training has stayed the same since I have two new employees and I'm an assessor. The, I do have training I have to do and with new two employees, I have to have them trained also. Um, I think that's all the lines. The professional service is actually the grievance board. Uh, appraisal services is for courts. Yeah, I think that's about all of it for all the lines. Any questions on those? Okay, um, looks like 196 and 197 are the uh, exemption impacts to, for the taxes. Yes. Um, from most of these are actually things that we can't change. They're New York State, county, schools, hospitals. Um, the ones that I, I take care of are the vets, which are starting at 411.01 and down. Um, that actually has gone down from last year, which was 0.76 of a 1% to 0.7. And so has the low income age on the second page, which was a 0.78 last year, and it's gone down to 0.68 this year of a percent. Overall, it says it's 34.63%. That's an important number a council person wants to pay attention to. Like if you were to go up in Albany, I think their exemption rates over 50%. It may even be significantly higher. Uh, but it tells you out of the assessments on page one, how much of that gets exempted that we can't uh, charge taxes to. So we think it has basically a 35% exemption rate. Yeah. Okay, that's good information. We appreciate that. Okay, any uh, any additional questions? On, I know it's a little bit of a back and forth with the, the property um, tax base, the, uh, the cost of running that office, and the uh, exemptions. Does anybody have any other questions on those those items? Okay, I can take a motion to approve pages one twenty two and one ninety seven. So moved. Second. 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 Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? I had Gio on the motion and Aviva on the second. Correct. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Great. Um, I'd like to now open pages 21 and 40 and 41. We have Mike Gervais on the line. Yes, I do. Okay. Can you hear me? Ahead, Mike. Yep, we can hear you. Go ahead, Mike. Thank you. Okay. This is my budget for which page? We're going to do page 40 first. Um. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 40. Yeah. That's fine. Just as long as we know which one you're doing, that's that's fine. If that, yeah. that's what you want to do. Okay. Yeah. Page 40 
Uh, basically, everything on the top half has probably pretty much stayed the same until you get to telephones and internet. We've added access and additional internet service with Lori to get more internet service at our locations. So I picked up a little bit more on that. We have the forensic lab that we pick, we have now. And phone bills, phones are going up, cell phones are going up on usage. Also on copiers, we added a lot, an additional amount for overages because the city's using a lot more printing within the city so they don't have to take it out. And so the machines are getting heavier usage, so we're paying a little bit on our overages at, you know, black and white is at six cents. Colors at eight, so it goes up a little bit. And we had a high amount this year, so that's why that one is in there. So that's about it. On the next page, most of that is just standard, you know, postage that goes back and forth monthly from what gets used, what gets back charged to other departments and the court, and then we get it back. And then I put more in, so that's the yearly. So basically, that's it for the central services budget. Um, if anybody has any questions, I can answer them. Okay, and next, we go to page two. It's Joe Burns. Yeah. Burns. I'm just wondering, uh, long distance, there's long distance charges on phones these days? Not yes, we have, because we have landlines, um, there's our landline services through AT&T. Uh, and our Verizon and our long distance service is through AT and T, so we do have what we do get like four or five hundred dollars a month on long distance charges as the phone calls out from our landlines. It's not the cell phones; it's the landlines that we have because the city is a landline service. All right, thanks. Okay, any other questions on those two pages? Then we'll go to the easy page. Page twenty-one is the. Uh, my budget for the Board of Contract and Supply, and that's basically just for legal ads, depending, and that's up or down, depending on how many bids and RFPs and RFQs we go out for that I have to advertise in newspapers. So I, I dropped that by 500, and uh, you never know. Depends on how many we go out for next year. Okay. So if you have any questions. Does anybody have any other questions for Mike? Okay, I'll take a motion to approve pages 21 and 40 and 41. I'll move. So moved. Pages 21 Second. and 41. Second. Thank you, council people. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> okay, and all, all in favor of the, approving those pages? Aye. 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 Anyone anyone opposed? Okay. Um like to open pages 29 and 30 and um and the line item from engineering on, on uh, page 200. I'll just make a note that the capital improvements, obviously there's multiple departments on those pages. So we're just when we get to the capital improvements, we'll be just approving um the lines that, that Ray will be presenting on for those those uh for the capital items. I no, see. Can I, I actually, can I interrupt one second? Just yeah. Uh, who made the motion and who seconded? On uh, Mike Durbay. I made a motion. Joe Burns. I. Okay, I seconded okay. as well. Yeah, because I, I. What's happening is people are making simultaneous motions and seconds. So either Phil, you can call out what you hear as to who made it, or I'm going to have to keep jumping in and ask. Okay. So okay. I apologize. So so that one will give Gio the motion and Joe the yes second. Okay, uh, Ray, are you ready? Yep, I'm ready. Okay, go, go ahead, page 29. Okay, um, uh, page uh, 29, if you look at personnel services, um, we have one position that is unfilled at this time and we've kept it vacant in the proposed budget. Um, other than that, I don't think there are many changes to the budget. This is this is Councilwoman Friedman. Yes, go ahead. 
Um, thanks. I'm looking at the the levy study and improvements line, and I was wondering if we would be able to um, see the study and the recommended improvements. I don't believe I've seen that yet. Uh, that's not completed yet. Oh, I see. Okay, so it's, um, but it was completely paid for in last year's budget. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, Aviva, that's not correct. Yeah. Right, that's not correct. We, okay. we, added the, we, we added the money into last year's budget. You'll see it was originally adopted at zero. It was adjusted to 183 through an RL last year. We got a purchase order and paid part of that number of 183,529 through October 2nd of this year. Uh, what you see there, that's what. The money that 183 you see there is money that's been as a PO as well as been paid. Let me see if I can find that for you. So Chuck, it's encumbered, but it hasn't necessarily all been paid yet. Yes, that, that's what that stands for. That's money that's encumbered plus. So basically, right now we paid 128 thousand dollars of that. And there's 54 thousand remaining to be paid. Okay, so I um, I guess I'm confused where that extra, you said it was like 50, how much is left? 50? There's been 128,000 paid. We paid 128,000. Right. There's 54,000 still open on the PL to pay. Their, their contract is for the 183,000. They have not finished their work yet, so there's still more funds to go out to them as they progress. I see. Okay. And since that was part of the purchase order that was approved last year, we don't have to budget for it in this year's budget. Now, am yeah. I understanding Correct. correctly? Yes. yes. Okay. Correct. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, Chuck. Um, I have a question. Yes. Go ahead, John. The uh, unfunded uh, technician, I didn't quite hear what you said. We unfunded it. It's just this coming year. I, I have a vacancy that was not filled this year, and so we are going to keep it vacant next year. Okay. But I don't want to do away with the position in case um, things change and we're able to hire somebody. I'll have the position there. Okay. Okay. But then we have to add to the budget. It's not in the budget. It's not like in. Joe, so you're correct. We would yeah. have to add it to it. It's not in the budget. Okay, thanks. Well, we would have to fund it in the yes. budget. It the doesn't have to go back to civil there, service. Being funded. Yes. Right, okay. Yes. I got it. Thanks. The, the position is still approved, but the, we would have to then add the funding to that position. Correct. Correct. Okay, anybody have any other questions on pages uh, 29 and 30 for Ray? Yes, this is Councilwoman Friedman. I just have one more question um, right. to follow up with what Councilman Burns asked. So that vacant position, um, and I, I'm, I apologize that I don't know the answer to this, but that, that position, um, is it listed in those, um, the positions that are in the contingency as no, well as in this line or no? No, it's not. What I, what I sent you on Saturday night was there's two spreadsheets. There's one that has the, the vacancy said vacancies, the, the little tab at the bottom. Those are all yeah. positions. That we, those are all positions we have funded in the budget in the contingency account. The tab that says unfunded, are positions that we do not have funds in the 2021 budget for. And this is one of those. Okay, I got you. Thank you for the clarification. Okay, uh, Ray, look, you have um, quite a number of lines on page 200 for the uh, under the capital lines. Did you go over those, them with us? 
Yes, as we <clears throat> normally do in our in our budgets, we have money that's uh, street reconstruction. That's for um, basically what it says: street reconstructions. But it's mostly for curb sidewalks and uh, painting, not paint paving and and striping. And the uh, it's hard to read some of them. The sewer lines and water lines; those are for doing the underground repairs or or uh, replacements or installation of new uh, storm sewers. They all that all falls under the underground. And uh, under under street reconstruction, there would be it says street reconstruction, but we have a list of what would be done under that street reconstruction item. We have a tentative list that that uh, as we get into the year, sometimes changes due to things that arise during the year. But we try to plan ahead when we put that number together. Right, City Council with Tom Scalen. Can I have a question on the parking ramps? What's the $1.2 million designated for? Parking ramps. Right, I'll take care of this for you. Yep. What, what it is, Tom, is we have issues at Water Street and State Street, okay, that we're going out trying to figure out what it's going to take to repair them. And we also have the, R, the RFP out there for the to the development of that water street uh, ramp. Uh, we have money in ramps from prior years, but not enough to fix up everything that needs to be done on State Street and or Water Street. So we're putting $1.2 million that would hopefully get us through all of next year and whatever we have to do. And there's really no money beyond that. The actual number that we originally started with was probably about $2.5 million. And we've cut it down to 1.2 so we can get through one year and figure out what we need to do from there. All right. Thanks, Chuck. Appreciate it. Thanks, Ray. So Chuck, the, the uh, demolition of the Boscos lot, let's call it that, uh, this money is not, not for that. It, it could be. So it could be. I'm not telling you that it is. We don't really know. We just know that we need a lot of money to fix these ramps up, and this is a starting point. I mean, it's possible that the RFP will come in and we can put that into part of the development of that area and be used in the parking ramp over there. But we know that we have a lot of work to do on both of them, uh, and 1.2 million is not enough, I can tell you that. That's a that's a drop in the bucket. They're 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 old structures that uh, the upkeep and maintenance was not kept up to date uh, through their life, and uh, they're near the end of their life now. And to keep them going takes a lot more money. So, okay, hence the you. RFP that's out there now for Water Street. Thank you. And uh, I have a question about the fire station. And we we approved the fire station this year, and it's in the 21 uh, budget. Is that is that what we did? We approved it to be borrowed in 21. Is that right? No, what you did is you approved like it. It's for 30 years. Then I'm just wondering if what year it's you know when it starts. What it's going to be, Joe, is what you approved this year was to do the design factor of about $800,000, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Right. And once we get that design function done, we'll know what the cost of construction is. We're estimating it to be $7 million. It may be $8 million. It may be $6 million. Uh, I don't think anybody knows as of this budget. Uh, but that's what we're asking you to, to approve, at least $7 million. If $7 million is enough, we won't come ask you for any more. If it's not enough, we will uh, come ask you for it. If it's less, we won't spend it. 
Okay, thanks. Chuck, it's uh, Tom Scalen. <clears throat> so do we have a, a date on when this is going to be bid out, the fire station to build it? Do you have any date in mind? I have not heard any dates. I, I have not been we into have, the comments. Yeah, we don't have a specific date yet, but I think we're shooting for sometime in uh, spring. When it would be, when it would be bid out to, to start building? Yes. Okay, all right, thank you. Yes, sir. Okay, any other questions for, for Ray while we have him here? Okay, we have a motion to approve. Um, oh, sorry, this is Councilman Friedman. Sorry, okay. I'm just Go looking. Ahead. Thank you. Um, so I have the um, the RFP open for the Water Street ramp, and I'm sorry, I can't find. I'm just skimming through this really quick. Sorry about that. Um, but this is so. Okay, so I just um, want to Council clarify that. Councilor Freeman, this is Councilman Scalen. I'm not sure we should look at the RFP because it has nothing to do with this budget. I think we well, should I proceed mean, with the budget. Okay. I mean, the reason why I was asking is just because what if there's – like, I know that the the RFP won't necessarily tell us about the budgeting but wouldn't do those two things contradict each other like we would we want to redevelop it but we also want to bond for 1.2 million dollars to um to repair it as well uh, or am i misunderstanding uh, no. you're misunderstanding aviva 1.2 million okay. is for both Wonder street and state street okay i think just to repair uh for like six months for Water Street is like three hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Okay, I, but we could use part of this money to demolish it, which might be a million dollars to demolish that plant over there. Okay, uh, but one point two is probably mostly going to end up over at the State Street ramp that needs probably two and a half to three million dollars worth of repairs. I see. And then so we would bond for one point two million dollars theoretically now and then the other one million dollars at a later time for the state yes. street repairs. Yes. Okay. Okay. And so then why wouldn't those if we're predicting that it costs two million dollars, why wouldn't those be in this budget now? We're not sure what it's gonna cost. We're just estimating it. We have to get all this stuff figured out and our best guess right now is two and a half million dollars but it's not all going to be done in one year okay so we're lowballing we're we're estimating that there needs to be 1.2 million dollars worth of repairs next year and then in maybe 2022 then will be the extra one point whatever million dollars yes. is that correct that, that's correct that's correct Okay, all right, thank you for the explanation. Okay, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, Scaringi motion to approve pages 29, 30, and the engineering capital lines on page 200. Second. Councilman, is that Sophia? Yeah. Okay, we have a motion by Councilman Scaringi, second by Councilwoman Pierre um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody, anyone opposed? Okay. 559, we're right on. Um, I'd like to open page 72. Do we have, oh, I, I saw Joel a second ago. Are you on here? There he is. Okay. okay. All right. Hi, Joel. Um, go ahead with page 72, Aye. please. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll start this, okay, and then you can go on from there since uh, okay, I've probably been most involved in this budget process. Uh, what we did with the Director of Economic Development is uh, we do not believe we can find somebody for one year to take that position since it's an appointed position. 
what we ended up doing with that spot is unfunding it from January through November and then uh, funding it in December. So whoever is elected the next year's mayor, if they wanted to bring somebody on board in December, the mayor is willing to do that for that person <clears throat> to bring them up to speed a little bit earlier. Um, we also unfunded an administrative assistant position uh, in that department. And Joe, I'll let you talk about the rest of the items there. Well, we uh, reduced travel and training there substantially. I mean, that, that commensurate with not having a director. Um, dues and memberships um, and office supplies uh, have also been cut significantly. And uh, our promotion marketing budget remains. Um, hey Chuck, can I ask you, so the the point twelve for the director is sixty nine. That that number is, is high, right? Because I see the change in the budget from two seventeen to one twenty one, but the one twelve position would be less. Sixty nine is for the full position, correct? Right. Correct. So it's one twelfth of that is what got funded. So we okay. put the whole salary in the $69,005, but we're only funding one twelfth of it. Okay. Thanks. Actually, it must be more than that. It must be 12. We did 12% 12 per, 12 of it. So it's like. Okay. I understand. Okay. Any other questions for Chuck or Joel on page 72? Okay. We'll take a motion to approve page 72. Motion to approve page 72. Okay, second. Second. Okay, I got um, Councilman uh, re Resonity on the, the motion and Councilwoman Friedman on the second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay, thanks, uh, Joel. Thanks, Chuck. Thank you. Um, I'd like to open now page 95. We have Steve Carson on the on the line. Do we have uh, Steve? Are you on the line? Is uh, Steve Joel, Joel, like, uh, go ahead. Steve is on here. He's muted. I'm not sure if he's away from his computer right now. Okay. Um, do we have Juliet on the line? Yep, I'm here. Okay, let's uh, let's not open page 95. We'll we'll give Steve a couple minutes to get back, and um, let's uh, now. Th so we will not open page 95. We'd like to open pages 73, 88, 89, and 93 and 94. Um, Juliet, go ahead uh, with, with uh, whichever order in that. If you want to start with 73, that's fine. Okay, um, let me get to that page. Let's Thank you. See. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, for the whole planning and zoning department, is that the page you're on? Um, well, you can tell us out of those. It oh, looks like okay. 73, 88, 89, 93, and 94. 73 only has one line. If you right. want to go. Okay, that's the COD. Yep, this is for oh. our, our committee on architecture and urban design, um, payment for our committee members. And there's no um, public noticing, so we don't have any additional costs other than the stipends for the members. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, 88. All right. Okay, this is for our Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, the board member payments, we have five members. Um, General operating supplies that is all staying the same, um, covers the cost of public noticing and um, legal ads and advertising. I believe we kept the same. We did go down a little bit for that one. Um, okay. So. Okay, great. Any questions on 88, page 88? 
Okay, what's eighty nine? Okay, well, um, planning commission, the, the same thing. Um, payment for our board members. Um, we have seven members. Um, general oper operating supplies are for public noticing. Um, and then the legal ads line, again, is for posting legal notices. And we did reduce, I believe, in a couple, it's hard to see online. We did reduce a little bit in each line, I believe. Okay, um, planning and zoning, pages, page uh, 93 and 94. Uh, while Juliet is getting there, Steve Carson posted a note that he does not have audio. So I'm not sure how, if, if the organizer can unmute him or if he needs to do something, but he did send a, a written note. He probably needs to call in. He just sent me a note that says uh, it should be working now. Okay. Okay. Yeah, he, he just sent a note saying it's on. Okay. Okay. Tell him we'll get right to him as soon as we're done with Juliet here, and then we'll be right, right with him. All right. Okay. Um, we should be. All right. Um, we should be quick on this. I guess we did reduce um, budget in a couple of lines in our office supply and. Um, we didn't reduce in the travel and training. We did a little bit. Uh, it's important to keep people, you know, current. Let's see. Were there any other questions regarding our proposed budget? This is Councilwoman Riley. Um, how are mm -hmm. you? Uh, the housing I'm fine. <laughs> good, good. The housing mm -hmm. safety specialist is still mm -hmm. up and posted. Mm -hmm. It will yep. remain with the intention to hire before as soon as possible. Yep, absolutely. We we had a number of very good um, applications. Um, we had a few that were within the city, um, city hall, um, that I was very interested in and then they did withdraw their, their applications. Um, so we're reviewing now the remaining applications and uh, the mayor is also looking at them. So we have not, just as we we're getting ready to schedule the interviews, um, we, my office had a positive and we were sent out, so um, we we're quarantined. So I'm hoping to schedule interviews and everything gets back to normal. Mm -hmm. And that is a grant funded position, totally grant funded. Okay, any other questions for Juliet? Okay, I take a motion to approve pages 73, 88, 89, and 93, 94. Syringe, so moved. Okay, we'll give that one to Angela. Second. Second. All right, we'll give that to Gio. Okay. Um, All right. In favor of Brooklyn, Juliet. Uh, <laughs> go ahead. Yep, and I'm just signing off. Bye. Okay, thanks, Julia. Thank um, mm -hmm. Everybody, uh, all in favor of approving uh, Juliet's um, pages? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay. Um, Steve, we got you now. I believe so. Can you hear me? Okay. Yep, we can hear you. Um, go That's ahead great. with page 95, please. Uh, this is the standard for uh, me, my two employees, well, two and a third employees. Um, I don't think we've changed that much. Uh, I think we may have reduced overtime. We, of course, I believe have reduced uh, travel and training simply because it's COVID. Um, I have increased legal ads advertising because I believe with the COVID, the new things from COVID coming down and the change to our action plan process that we're going to be doing more annual ads or more ads this year. Uh, but everything else I believe is pretty much the same uh, other than uh, uh, just the way salaries change from year to year. This is Councilwoman Friedman. I have a question. Yeah, Go absolutely. Ahead. Thanks. I, I actually have two questions. First of all, I didn't quite catch what you said about the advertising line why that was increased 
advertising line is going to be increased because with uh, COVID, with additional COVID, we basically normally only have three grants in a year. This year we'll have the three grants plus two that we're running, plus two more that are coming down the hopper uh, because of COVID. Um, and in addition to that, we're changing the action plan process. Uh, we may actually be doing additional public hearings. And so we'll need that additional uh, legal ad space uh, in there to do the required legal ads that we're going to be doing. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, mm -hmm. And my other question was, um, can you provide more insight as to the temporary services line? Why the Uh, that just died. Your whoever was speaking, I, that just died on me. Yeah, sorry, but someone just was calling me. Um, I apologize. So my my question was, um, can you shed some light about the temporary services line? Why there is, why we consistently spend from that line, but there in 2020 and in 2021, there's no money budgeted there. Um, I believe those are. I'm actually not. Wait, oh, temporary services. I believe that was um, uh, that was the money we paid to the HUD consultant that we hired, and uh, I think they're going to be continuing on to next year. That's actually, I believe, uh, Paul Nelson's uh, uh, contractual services as consultant. He's sort of uh, in an interesting position in the BLDC department, but he's helping us close out things. So uh, for the HUD programs, um, so I believe that's what the temporary services is. It, it's, it's essentially not, it wouldn't be filled other than for the fact that we have COVID and we're uh, dealing with some findings from HUD that he's been helping with, and we project that he's going to be going into this next year. Uh, mayor's office maybe will provide more insight to that um, than I could as to the nature of the relationship there, but. Um, Currently, he's he's helping close out some findings from HUD, and he's sort of administering or helping run the um, COVID funding program for uh, businesses and uh, non for profits that need help due to COVID. Okay, um, and if we're anticipating that he will continue next year, then. <clears throat> um, I'm confused as to why there's still no money budgeted for for that. Aviva, I'll, I'll answer leave. that. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Steve, we have thirty thousand dollars out there in a purchase order for this year that we approved that has not been touched yet. So there's going to be mm -hmm. funds remaining from this year's budget into next year. Is I see. So the if we need more than that 30,000 next year that is unspent this year, we'll come back uh, to you. But we, at this point, there's nothing that says we're going to or not going to. Is that not the salary for Paul or is that, am I thinking it's something else altogether? Uh, you know what, you are right. That is the salary for Paul. You are right, it's not consultant. So that is gonna be expended this year and you have, you're have you gonna pay him out of the COVID line, correct, ah, Steve? I believe so, yeah. I think we're gonna swap over to that. Yes. I see, so we should expect, at some point next year, we should expect a, a transfer from the COVID line to this temporary services line? Uh, that I'm not sure because I don't know exactly which budget line uh, is planned to be used to fund his his uh, his salary or not salary consulting fees I guess. Okay, I see. So the the there's nothing budgeted because we need that line to be open because his services fall underneath the temporary oh, services for HUD, mm -hmm. although it's funded in a different line. So let, let me try to explain this a little bit. He was hired as a temporary service employee this year to help us clean up some of the issues, I'll say legacy issues, 
that we've had to be trying to work out with HUD. And Paul has many years of experience, so we brought him on for $30,000 to help us through this, to clean up some of the problems that we have. Uh, <clears throat> then COVID kicked in, and when we got this fund, he can assist us as a consultant, helping us uh, work our way through the COVID funds. So he's being paid as a consultant out of the COVID funds. He will not will not come back as a temporary service at this time. I see. Okay. So um, thank you for your for your patience with me as I'm just trying to wrap my head around this. So um, I understand um, where the funding has come from is coming from and why this is a temporary position. Obviously, COVID. Well, hopefully, it's temporary. Um, so now my my next question is then what um well okay i'm just wondering what so if his services fall under temporary services for hud um where where is that how, how is that money then going to get into this line will, will we have a transfer will we have to approve a funding You've already approved oh, it when you approved the, it's not going to come back to this line. You've already approved it when you approved the administrative fees on the COVID money before. Can't remember the exact okay. amount that you did. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. That was a little bit confusing. Thank you for your patience. Okay. Uh, thanks, Steve. Any other questions for Steve? What do you have him here? Okay, I'll take a motion. Mr. Chair, it's Karenji, right. motion to move page 72. 90, uh, 95? Yep. Okay. Who second? Second. Second. No, let's get yeah. second. All right, we'll give that one to Tom. Okay, motion by Geo, um, second by uh, President Scanlon. Uh, all in favor of approving page 95? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay. Um, Actually, we're a couple minutes ahead of schedule. We're scheduled for a five minute break. Do you want to take that or do you want to press on here? Let's press on, me? Mr. Chairman. This is, um, is Councilman yeah. Friedman. I would I would prefer to take a five minute break. That's my vote. Okay, let's uh, we're ahead, we're ahead anyway. Can we be back at like uh, literally five minutes, like six twenty three, six twenty four? We'll still be, we'll still be a little bit ahead of schedule. Okay. I think, I think Lee's going to mute the lines. We'll be back in literally like four and a half minutes, okay? Perfect. Thanks. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Yep. See you in a couple minutes. I'm going to mute everybody's line, okay? Okay.
All right, who do we got? Do we got anybody back on here? Yeah. Councilman uh, Friedman is back. Friedman is back. Friedman is back. Well, Burns is back. Till Burns is back. Till Burns is back. Oh. <laughs> and Frank is here. Wilbur Riley is here too. Uh, Councilman Thrawn, once you're ready, we should probably do a roll call again. Okay. Um, here, Gio, are you back? I didn't hear Gio and Tom. Are they back? I guess we could do the Gio and Tom are you back. I don't see them logged in. Geo's the one that wanted to press on. Actually, I was inclined to do that too, but I'm glad you said to said that because I needed to stand up myself. I feel like breaks are an investment in the efficiency, at least for me. If I take a break, then I work more efficiently for the next, you know, half hour or whatever. Yep. No, I agree. As long as the five doesn't turn into some of these seminars you go to, five minutes turned into 10 or 15. All right, um, Gio, go ahead and take a, take a roll call for us. Hey, Chuck Shaker, are you here? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hey. hear me? You hear us? I hear you, yeah. All right, Gio, or Lee, do you want to take a roll call for us? Uh, Councilman Scrooge. We'll mark him as absent for now. Uh, Councilwoman Resnetti? Here. Councilwoman Riley? Here. Councilwoman Friedman? Here. Councilman Burns? Present. Uh, Chairman Strawn? Present. And President Scanlon? So that's two absent for the time being, Scaringi and Scanlon. Okay, I see Pat on the line. Uh, so here's what we're gonna do. He's got quite a few. I'm gonna I'm gonna read through these pages and open all these up, but we're probably will approve them in more of a sequential um, way as it's on the agenda. Um, but I'd like to open uh, pages 126 through 138. In pages 202 and 20, uh, 202 through 209 on the fee schedule that applies to um, Pat O'Day's um, sections. Um, so, so Pat, go ahead and start. Uh, just tell us which pages. I don't know if you want to go in this order that's on the agenda, or I'm okay with any order you want to go in. Why don't you just tell us which page you want to go with, and we'll just follow through with how you want to do it. Pat, you with us? Pat, yeah, you there? I see you. Pat O'Day, can you hear us? I uh, see him. It says he doesn't. Yeah. 
All right, we, we need to find a universal signal for unmute. <laughs> He's looking good. Yeah. I'm not sure what that universal signal is. <laughs> I know some school teachers who have went on to Zoom have a flip a card that one side has a picture of a microphone and the other side has a picture of a muted microphone and then you just hold up that card. That seems to work for children, so it might work for adults too, but I don't know. <laughs> he cannot hear us either. There's only one universal signal that, and then he would probably leave, so. Um. Hey Lee, he cannot hear us at all. Okay. I'm kind of pointing to my ear because he can see. We can't hear. Do we have uh, Lee. Do you have Pat's phone number? Yes. So you want me to take call him? And call him. Yeah. <clears throat> He's got a lot of stuff. I'd rather not skip all the way to to Paul. I don't call him, but since Pat's like we can see him. He's right there. So hopefully. So while he's getting there, we can do a few of these that I'm responsible for. Okay, which ones are those? You can do the serial bonds, the band. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, so pages 135 page. and 136? Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> That's what we can All right, start let's with. Up, let's open up pages 135 and 136, and we'll start there. And Chuck, 137 and 138 all are part of that same package, right? Uh, let me look. Probably, I know there's Here's another the one. Other long-term yep. debt transfer to capital. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's open up okay. 135 to 138. So on page 135, the serial bonds. These are bonds that we have issued uh, on behalf of the city to cover the cost of the uh, repairs and building of the new uh, Seven Holly Street. Uh, the serial bonds are all old stuff that's been worked on and closed. The last one is last year. And next year we have to make principal payments of $435,627 and interest payments of $114,378. Those are straight from the amortization schedules. Okay. Uh, the bands are for our summer. Oops, sorry. Okay. Go ahead, Lavina. Oh, thanks. I just have a clarifying question. Um, the the bonds that are listed on page 135, these are um, the same. These are uh, the bonds that are summarized on page 130, right? They're not duplicated. They're just reprinted and summarized. Is that correct? Yes, the, the ones on 130 tells you when they're paid, when they mature, so you get a more detail on each bond. Okay, thanks. Actually, that's a good point. So we'll include 130 in this section of groups when we go. We'll go to when we go to approve them. Thank you for that. Correct. Correct. Okay. Um, the page 136 are bond anticipation notes. These are money that we borrowed <clears throat> but have not turned them into a long-term uh, bond yet. Um, most of this money is related to uh, Seven Holly Street, but there's also money related to Water and State Street out there. And next year we have to make a payment of $245,000 in principal and $188,100 in interest. On page 137, uh, we have no more uh, other long-term debt. We used to have like leases and stuff. We've eliminated all those. And page 138, um, that's a transfer to capital uh, to cover the fiscal agent fees uh, for bonding. We have to pay money to close on a bond. So that 10,000 is there for that. And if you go back to page 130, you can look at each different bond. It gives you a little bit more detail about it. So the top line <clears throat> was issued in 2013. It'll expire in 2029. Uh, we make a 
principal and interest payment on February 1st and an interest only payment on August 1st and the, the payments are listed below. So you'll see the principal payment on this one of $30,773 and interest for the year is $16,455. And it basically goes all the way down for everything there that we just talked about. I don't know if anybody has any questions on that. Yes, uh, yes this is Councilman Friedman. Uh, go ahead, Aviva first, then Joe. Okay, thanks. Um, I was just wondering if you could please provide a little bit more information about page 137, how we, um, like, why the, um, why there's no money budgeted for the long-term debt? Is that just, does that just mean that we paid off everything? Yes, yes. This, okay. the city does not get into leases anymore because it doesn't help us on our constitutional tax limit. So anything that we do, we either pay cash or we go on a long-term bond. Okay. And um, is there any reason to keep the line open? We have, the Munis makes it stay open for a couple of years before it, it all zeroes out. After that, um, we can remove it. Okay, thank you. Yeah, ready? Go ahead, go ahead, I'm Joe. Go. Yeah. Um, when all the dust settles, uh, when we do the bonding on the fire station and the parking ramps and all that, uh, where do you anticipate we will be as far as, I don't know if it has anything to do with this budget, but you know, uh, our percentage of what, how much we can bond, or will you be able to give us a report soon on, on where we would be standing uh, this coming year? Uh, I, I don't have the reports right in front of me, Joe. Um, I could tell you that at the end of this year, I plan on, I'm working on right now doing an exclusion report. And we get that done before we bo borrow this money next year. We'll be down into the, I believe it's like 68, 69%. But once we borrow all this, we'll be back up into about 74, 75 percent. Okay, thank you. Excuse uh, me. Just so everyone knows, uh, Councilman Scringy and President Scanlon, they both messaged me and said that they can hear what's going on, but for some reason they're still muted. So we're trying to work out those problems, but they are here. Okay, um, let's go ahead and um, see if we can take a, um, well, I guess if they're not here, maybe we should wait a minute. Um, looks like 131, Pat, are you with us now? Boy, we should, maybe we shouldn't have taken a break. We were doing good before that. Um, it, Chuck, can you talk about 131? Looks like it's revenue from the parking ramp. 131 i would i can talk about i would rather have pat explain a little bit here on the the revenues basically i have a schedule that him and i work up to figure what we're going to get on each one of these but he's got some different avenues for next year that's going to help generate some more revenue i'll let him talk about that the interest in earnings uh is what it is there and interfund transfers is money that we have to transfer from the general fund to support the uh, ramps fund to operate at a break even. In the past, this was three or four hundred thousand dollars. We've gotten it down to about ninety thousand, and that's mainly due to the when Seven Holly Street kicks in. Okay. Do we have uh, Geo and Tom back with us? If they can hear, do we can hear? They can hear us, but we can't hear them. Okay. Um, all right, you're communicating with them. Let's let's go ahead and, and, and take a motion to approve 130, 135, 136, 137, and 138. 
So moved. Second. We have uh, Councilwoman Friedman on the motion and Councilwoman Riley on the second. Um, all in favor of approving those uh, five pages? That was Councilwoman Resonetti. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry. It's I'm okay. sorry. Okay, anybody opposed? Now, if they can hear us, I guess Tom and Tom and Gio could let us know. Okay, so those five pages are approved. Do we, can we hear Pat yet? Pat, can you hear us? Can we hear you? You want to approve page 130? Yeah, we just did. Did you? So okay. Councilwoman, Free, uh, Councilwoman Friedman on the, the motion and Councilwoman Resonity on the second for 130, 135, 136, 137, and 138. And when we get past 131 through 134, um, 127, 129, and then we'll go to the, the fee schedule part. If we can see him, I don't know why I can't just click that little green button. He didn't come in as a panelist, I don't know. All right, everyone, I put a Pat O'Day on speakerphone. You can hear him now. Okay, okay can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay, Pat, here's what we have. We have um, pages 130. Well, we have 120. We have the rates on 127 to 129, and then we have the uh, parking ramps 133 and 134, and the revenue and contingency on 131 and 132. So, tell us which pages. I can't. I can't hear you. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Right, Lee. Would you please ask Pat to discuss pages 133 and 134? Did you catch that? 133. And 134. Let, let's just do yep, a few. That's fine. Open up pages 133 and 134. Okay. I mean, that's, uh, there isn't a lot of changes here. Other than what you Seven Holly. Uh, I don't, uh, let's see. Like the general operating is about the same printing went up because we're buying more tickets. It's because we're at seven Holly Street. That gasoline the same. So saying another that's gone up because we have to buy calcium for uh, seven Holly Street it has to be used. That's fourteen dollars a bag. It's a little more than our max. Uh colding, that's the same. Gas and heat, the same. Uh, electricity, it's, I don't have any control over that. Uh, telephone's about the same. We're at Bill Holly's. Well, he's got that fixed up, so that's a little more because he put it on 24 7. Uh, the insurance going up because that's liability insurance for the branch. And the management services has gone up because we're in down the new garage. We've hired more people. Uh, uh, left in there because we'll in the new garage. Uh, equipment repair and maintenance, that's exactly the same. Equipment and maintenance, uh, we raise that up because we're with Water Street, State Street, it's things are wear, wearing out, lights. Um, so, we there. so that's about it on those pages. Say, but I don't know if I get a question. Yes, this is Councilman Friedman. Hey, Can ahead, you Councilman. hear me? Uh, I can't. I, it's muffled. 
Okay, I wonder maybe if my questions could be relayed by Lee, maybe. Um, uh, nothing like technical difficulties. Anyway, <laughs> um, okay, I had a few questions. I, it, is it safe to assume that a lot of the, um, the lower than expected lines uh, that are, that have been expended, the, sorry, that was confusing the way that I worded that, I apologize. The lines um, under the encumbered or expended that are lower than seem reasonable, I guess. Is it safe to assume that most of those are because of COVID? Most or all of them are because of COVID? Uh, were you able to catch that? No, I couldn't. I said it was muffled. Okay. So the, answer. the answer to that question is yes. Okay. And, the, um, and what was my other question? Oh, I was um, a little bit confused as to the... Um, oh, never mind. I'm sorry. I answered my own question. Oh, no, wait, I do. Uh, sorry, <laughs> I do have a question. Um, what is the the internet fees for the ramps? What does that mean? Aviva, this is Lori. We're going to run internet to the ramps because we're putting security cameras in there and we'll use the internet to connect back to City Hall so we can monitor the cameras. Okay, that makes sense. Thank you. <laughs> While I'm organizing my thoughts, appreciate it. Okay, any other questions on 133 and 134? We have a motion to approve those two pages. So moved. So moved. Second. Second. Okay, we have uh, Geo, uh, Councilwoman Scringy on the motion and Councilwoman Resonetti on the second. All in favor of approving those two pages? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay, um, 131 and 132, Pat, can you hear, can, can you look? One, 132 looks like it's zero. 131 has, uh, uh, Chuck wanted you to speak onto that with the revenues for the, the ramps. So what Pat and I did is we went through and we tried to break out for each facility, meaning each ramp, like Holly Street is going to have 304 spots. The surface lot on Collar Street has 85. State Street has 590. Water Street has 672 spots. And then we tried to break it out into what monthly parkers will be doing at each place, what we think will be daily people coming in and what the average turns will of each one and broke it down into each facility. So we're anticipating State Street to bring in 550,000, Water Street to bring in 300, Collier Street to bring in 305, and Seven Holly Street 475,000. Now that is a fairly large increase. Uh, from last year to this year, but most of that is related to Holly Street. The other thing that Pat is doing is we're going to 24 seven on some of these operations, which you'll see in the fees. Um, that is also gonna generate us some more revenue also. Pat, if you hear me, you want to speak up at all? I can't hear you. So I if you I look at the couch, is there anything anything to highlight on the rate structure, Chuck, from 127 to those from 127 to 129? You just mentioned yeah, that. I will, I will talk about that. So on Collier Street, everything is remaining the same. Okay, uh, the Water Street ramp uh, is the same. Well, the main thing is because we're adding all new equipment to Seven Holly and State Street. 
So when you look at 7, and, 7 Holly and State Street, we're taking it from 6 a.m. Sunday to, excuse me, 6 a.m. Monday to 6 a.m. Sunday. There's no break. There used to be breaks in the middle of the night, uh, and it was, we're losing a lot of money and people abusing the system. They pull in after hours and then pull out when they're leaving so they wouldn't have to pay a ticket. And this is uh, we capture all that with a new system. We're putting in two new systems by the end of the year in both of those facilities. The other aspect that we're going to do is we're going to have merchant validation, which is a cheaper rate than it is for the basic rate. So if you were to go to a downtown restaurant and the merchant wants to make an agreement with us uh, to pay us based off of the people that we approve, um, they'll get a cheaper rate to park there if they were to go into the restaurant. This is Councilwoman Friedman. I'm sorry to interrupt, but it's it's a little bit echoey and difficult to understand. I wonder if people maybe are not on mute. I think that's better. Do you hear me better? Yes, that's much better. What kind of okay. rate, Chuck? What kind of rate reduction? I was I was going to ask that if if some people are abusing the system, but some people might utilize that to, to frequent downtown businesses as well. If somebody makes an agreement, um, you, you give the restaurant a good deal, I'm assuming then, so the city can get a little bit of revenue and they can hopefully get some more business as well. Yes, normally the rate is $2 for the first hour and a dollar thereafter. We're basically cutting it in half to one hour, hour the first hour and 50 cents each additional hour. Okay. This, this is Councilwoman Friedman. I have a question about that. Go ahead. Okay, thanks. Um, I, I'm just thinking in terms of um, like structurally, I, I wonder if we would want to, if it's possible, um, maybe do a, a merchant validation for uh, the on the street kiosks, for example, to encourage short term parking and high turnover on the street, whereas the parking garages would then maybe we would want to appeal more toward long term park parking and have less turnover. And I, I don't know if the parking ramp merchant validation necessarily supports that. Um, well, can, the TX you... does not support those. But our new parking oh, I see. ramp. So, so with the kiosks, you wouldn't, it's a logistical issue where we wouldn't be able to do that at the kiosk? Correct, correct. Okay. All right, thank you. Um, yeah, that, that validation program was used for quite a few years, but it was antiquated because it had to use stick on stamps. Okay. Um, Chuck, I have a question here from President Scanlon. It can, uh, is cash still accepted? Will it still be accepted at the ramps themselves, or is it all cards now? You know, I don't know that answer 100% off the top of my head. Laura, do you remember that answer? Cool. No, I don't. I know if they're on a monthly parker, they can still pay cash. I'm not sure about an hourly parker, if, if that's going to be allowed or not. I'm not 100% sure. I can get you that answer, though. Okay. I have a question. Do Joe all Burke. the feet? Go ahead. Go ahead, Joe. Yeah, in the mayor's speech uh, last week, he was saying that we were down $500,000 in parking fees this year because of COVID. And so did we take that into effect, take that into consideration that that trend might continue? And if it did continue, do our costs go down if the parking goes down or do we then have to find that money somewhere else? We probably have to find it elsewhere, Joe, but I will say that some of the cost goes down. Like, give me an example of the insurance bills. 
uh, they're based off of the number of parking spots available in each lot. That's how we pay it, whether they're used or not. Um, so some costs can go down. Uh, some people, I believe, uh, last parking for load people during the early part of the pandemic to help reduce the burden on the city. Uh, so we have a pretty good relationship with LAS to, you know, work with them to try to lower the cost where and if possible. But your answer is, your question is, no, we did not. As long as we're still playing this budget, like the students will be here. And that people will be coming downtown to work. Thank you. This is Councilman Friedman. Go ahead. Thanks. Um, I I feel optimistic that that maybe will happen, but I'm I mean, is frankly, is that too big of a gamble to assume that this that the students will be here? Um, you know, and and do we know where that money will come from? if they're not and if businesses are shut down well i think the first thing is is that you could let the fund balance go into a negative fund balance which it already is but uh, we've brought it down so that it's closer to a zero than what it's been in the past uh but if we did this across the board at Viva, we'd be laying off 50 percent of the people uh, it's, we just don't know i mean it's just Okay. Basically, yeah, I know. I, you know, it's hard to give you an example. Is if I was to take the revenue down by two hundred fifty thousand dollars, just throwing that number out, I'd have to take two hundred fifty thousand from the general fund to fund it. You're saying that's if you prepared to have, like, if you budgeted to have that loss. Yes. Okay, and then what would be the difference if? let's say we're we're budgeting to have the revenue and then it doesn't come wouldn't it then be the same thing we would also have to detract it from the general fund balance technically yes so you could leave it for a negative fund balance and try to bring it back over the years that the the fund becomes profitable uh which i am hopeful that seven holly street ramp uh is at least break even where the other ramps technically are not at this point. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, I think with the information we have available to us now, I think I think we'll probably you know be okay with this. Are, uh, um, Chuck, let me ask you this so we can can kind of move along here. Is the fees listed on 127 to 129 that that show in the summary also feed into the fee schedule? on uh, that between 202 and 209? I believe so, Lori, do you remember for sure? Yes, they do. Okay, all right, here's what I'd like to do if we can, if everybody's okay with it. I'd like to do two um, two motions, one for the revenue side of this, which is 126 to 129, and those fees that feed into 202 to 209. We can have a motion to approve those. So. Second. Okay, so for the revenue side of this, which is, is as I see it, 126 to 129 and 202 to 209, those fees feed into that. We have a motion by Council, Councilman Scringy, a second by Councilman Resonetti. Uh, I have a, question, a procedural question. Yes. Um, before we vote, does, does page 202 to 209 have to be opened for us to vote on it? We're 202 to 209 is the fee schedule, right? We haven't yeah, gotten to that yet, correct? Well, we just, but well, we kind of, all right, let's open 202 to 209 as it relates well, to those fees. And then Chuck just said that those, all those fees feed into that fee schedule. Do yes. Chuck, do you want any, any other comments on can, those can we, fees? Can we, can we do all the other pages first, though? Let's vote on those. Well, everything else is, we, we have two more sections. All right. Well, we have two. We have a motion to approve those pages. 
We, okay. we have two more to approve, 133 and 134, the expenses. I'm just suggesting let's do those and then get to 202 through 209, which is really 206 and 207. Okay, we just had a motion to approve then 126 through 129 already in a second. And so we need a vote on that. Okay, all in favor of approving 126 through 129 then? Aye. 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 Anyone, anyone opposed? Okay, can we have a motion to approve pages 133 and 134? So moved. Second. Okay, uh, we have a motion by Council, Councilman Scringy, a second by Councilwoman Resiniti to approve 133 and 134. All in favor of approving those two pages? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? I okay. I, I will officially open 202 through 209, which is really 206 and 207 as it relates to the parking grant fee schedule. Um, Chuck Shager just said that we just approved on 126 to 129 feet into those pages. Does anybody have any comments first on those fees or any questions on those fees? Just a procedural matter. Remember, what you're doing is just voting on the parking ramp fees here, not necessarily the pages. Right. So you are voting on the fees that have been amended for you know, the, for parking. Right, yeah, exactly. These, yeah, yeah, we're gonna approve just the fees as it relates to the parking that appear on those pages. Does anyone have any comments or questions on those? Okay, I'll take a motion to approve the parking ramp and parking related fees that are in the city fee schedule. So moved. Second. Second. Okay, we have a motion by Councilman Scringy and a second by Councilman Resiniti to approve those fees related to parking. We have anyone at all in favor of approving those? Aye. 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 Okay. All right. Let's please go on to. Uh, we have Paul on the line. Wait, you haven't done 131 and 132 yet. Yeah. Sorry, I, I thought they did. Give me one second. Ken, did you get that? Maybe I missed it. I'm sorry, 131, maybe I didn't say 131 and 32 were in. We're in I, I think they were meant to be included, but no, I didn't mark those as separate <laughs> Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, point of information, the first motion was for pages 126 through 129. The second motion was for pages 133 and 144. I'll make a motion to move pages 131 and 132. Okay. We have a motion to approve page, move pages 131 and 132. We have a second. Second. I'll second. Okay. All in favor of approving moving pages 131 and 132? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Sorry about that. We have some technical difficulties. Uh, do we have we have uh, Mr. Palmer on the line. Pat McGinnis is here. Paul's on the line as well. Okay, so we have Pat and Paul. Okay. Okay, I'm going to. Okay, I'm going to open all of these and then we can approve them as it makes sense. We're going to open pages 74 through 87 and page 199 capital improvement as it relates to the parks and recreation budget. Go ahead, uh, Pat or Paul, as you as you want to go through. Just let us know where you're going to start at 74. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. So as far as the personal personal services, those are all um, all of our titles and um, they pretty much stay the same. Any raise would be contractually. Um, 
temporary services for the park ranger. Um, in the past, we had used BCC students and with COVID, uh, we went with a retired police officer and a and the Binghamton basketball coach. And um, we had much better uh, coverage with those two folks as opposed to the five students. So we'd like to continue that for next year with adding just one more adult. Uh, we had uh, much better luck with that setup. Overtime is the same. Um, vehicles, furniture, office supplies, printing. Printing is uh, pretty vital to us as uh, virtually everything we do uh, is through the schools. So we hand out a lot of flyers and brochures. Um, OLP is basically non existent these days. The electricity is uh, for the golf course, so we pay it out and then we get reimbursed. Um, telephone, internet, professional services. Uh, as you can see, they're pretty much the same. Any questions so far? Yes, this is Councilwoman Friedman. Yep. Uh, for the electricity line, uh, do we we normally pay out and then get reimbursed, or that's new for this year? Uh, no, that's standard. That's been that way. Okay. Um, so I'm curious why the there seems to be a significant decrease in the electricity line could you explain that I think, uh, off of previous year's usage you know we were able to bring that down a little bit because they haven't been using that much okay Aviva, there's but, another reason for it there used to be a cell tower up there right that we used yeah to pay we used to pay part of the fees for that, and that's no longer hooked up to the city. Right, okay. Uh, okay, that's that's one of my questions for this page. Thank you. Okay. Uh, the equipment lease, um, those are the rental cars that we have for the Rangers. Um, in an effort to save some money this year, we, uh, the staff here at the um, parks office do a lot of running around in the summer. So we uh, borrowed a van from the park maintenance and allowed the rangers to use the two cars that we already had. So uh, we didn't use any of that to speak of this past year. So, um, Hopefully, I don't know, we'll see if we have to rent or not in this coming year. Travel and training is all um, basically for people with uh, certifications to earn their, um, earn their credits to keep their certifications. And you pretty much can, you guys can read that. Um, we have the supervisors, and then we have uh, the arborists and things like that to uh, keep their titles. And to go along with that, that's the dues and memberships to those organizations to help us do that. Band concerts. Uh, Pat, you have a... Uh, yes. Uh, band concerts is... Uh... Yeah, we pay the bands for the music fest every year. Um, in past years, we've had a summer concert series. Um, so we're going to do some of those, but scale that back a little and actually get some movie licenses this year to show some movies in the parks. Everyone's um, still on? And then the holiday carousel rides is our Christmas event. Um, obviously, we didn't 
use much of it this year um because you know the bands for the music fest donated their service this year um as a one-off thing being digital all of our other events have pretty much canceled this year do you want to mention uh plexicom yeah yes uh plexicom also for the rec park music fest came and ran a line off of beethoven street um, and we we're actually able to professionally stream the concert this year. We had a, an actual sound producer and everything that was all donated by them. So um, they were awesome for that. Um, be able to do something um, rather than just straight up cancel. Okay, let's let's do this just logically as we go here. Does anybody have any questions for Pat or Paul on 74 and 75, the admin portion of the Parks and Recreation? Yes, this is Councilwoman Riley. Just for clarification, uh, Paul, Paul, can you tell me what is the CD that's after the Park Ranger? So there's two different lines for Park Rangers. Um, I believe CD stands is for uh, Community Development uh funds one of the rangers oh the cdbg line. right i think that's correct isn't that chuck that is correct paul thank you okay thank you it, any other questions this is on councilman Fraser. Uh, i have Go a follow-up question to councilman riley's question um so is the second Park Ranger position is funded through CDBG. Would it then be so? Why is it listed here then and included in the total? Wouldn't that be a du duplication? No. What what CDBG does is it pays the city some funds every year to fund certain positions in the budget, and so we fund it through this the general fund. But then receive money as revenue from the general from the community development fund. I see. So all of the CDBG funds will have budget lines with the amounts um, in the regular budget. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay, can I take a motion to approve pages, move pages 74 and 75? So moved. So moved. Second. Okay, I got a motion by Council, Councilman Scringy and a second by Councilwoman Riley. Um, all in favor of approving the admin portions 74 and 75? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay, uh, Pat and Paul, could you move on to the maintenance of portion 76 through 79? Sure. Um, Thank you. Yeah, as you can see the listing there uh, of all our titles. And um, one of those, let's see, where is it? Uh, park maintainer, uh, currently um, we have two normally. Uh, we had a retirement and uh, and we're going to leave that title there for the retirement and leave that unfunded. That's part of our savings. And uh, the rest is uh, any raises there are also uh, contractually. Uh, temporary services, uh, those are the laborers, the seasonal laborers that we have uh, hired in the years past. And this year we did not hire any. This is for the uh, maintenance part of it. Uh, this has nothing to do with summer fun or any of those programs. These are uh, high school and uh, college kids that we normally uh, would hire, but uh, again, we didn't hire anyone and uh, managed to uh, keep things in pretty good shape with uh, anywhere from 10 to 16 less people than usual. Um, overtime is for various uh, activities or things. Uh, a lot of times, uh, for the any event that we run, 
we'll have some people there for bathrooms, uh, trash pickup, those kinds of things. Uh, we also a lot of times have uh, the sound system that we're responsible for, so for parades and things like that. So that's where this overtime comes in or storms or anything to that event. Uh, equipment, uh, in the course of the season, we run through numerous uh, issues to keep things going, uh, garbage cans, you can read all those. Um, these are for our moment and the string trimmers and blowers, those kinds of things are for our uh, our mowing crews and chainsaws uh, for the tree crews um, and uh, playground equipment, things like that for uh, maintaining our park play structures. Any questions on those? I have a question to Joe Burns. Go ahead, Joe. Uh, uh, kudos on the uh, uh, rec park, by the way, on the my space, our space. Uh, I was over there for a couple of mornings and afternoons there, and you guys, and I was just over there the other day to look at. It. Just amazing. Uh, I was wondering between the insurance and the uh, donations, did that cost the city any money? No. The, uh, we had more than enough money to cover, and uh, we'll be in good shape for that. We have a few extra dollars if we decide to do something else, but uh, currently uh, we're not That's costing the taxpayers any money. It's awesome. Thank you, and it's a fantastic job. Thank you. So that's not a hundred. That's not a hundred percent true, Paul. I think it's, what you're talking about is there is some costs associated that we had employees over there, but very oh, okay. minimal dollars compared to all things. In kind services, yeah. Yeah. Um. Moving on to general operating supplies, those are just uh, basic things uh, to keep uh, the parks running. Um, tools. Uh, we run through a lot. We have two carpenters, mechanic, and things like that. So we keep those guys in equipment. Um, carousel repair parts. Is that Chuck? Carousels, what we did is we moved that to a transfer to capital line. So if you look at 99.50, you will put money into that, I believe. Right. So what we're trying to do there is uh, build some money up in, in the event that something catastrophic might happen. We'll have the money available at that point. Um, equipment parts, uh, that's a new line this year. Um, in the past, it's been a bit of a struggle at times. DPW does a lot of the ordering and buying of some parts and um, in trying to expedite things when we have something broken down, we have our small engine mechanic, he's gonna be doing the ordering of our parts so that we can get things done a little quicker. Uh, construction materials for all the, uh, you know, carpentry we do and just general maintenance of the parks themselves, park buildings, you know, dugouts uh, at the ball fields, those kinds of things. Chemicals are, uh, the vast majority of that is uh, chlorine for the five pools. Um, and then uh, fertilizer for anything we need to do on our ball fields and things like that. The uh, hanging baskets, that is our uh, half of the amount that goes up. Uh, Security Mutual pays for the other half. And UHS uh, on the south side on Vestal Ave also uh, buy some. And we maintain all of those. And also the ones in front of Twin Rivers, uh, student housing. 
they buy those. Uh, they put them up, but in our group, we uh, water those all summer for those folks. And the flowers and shrubs, mostly for the planters and things like that downtown. Uh, a lot of those are replacement plants. For some reason, after the initial plant downtown, uh, people seem to think that it's time to fill the planters at home. So uh, almost completely gut those and we have to buy and replace. So <laughs> it's kind of getting to be an annual thing. And I don't know what the deal is, but that's what that money's for. And uniforms is uh, also on the contract. We have to provide these uh, for our uh, employees. Anything on that page? Nope. All right, we'll move on then. Uh, closing allowance also uh, contractually. Gas and heat uh, for our park buildings. We uh, we leave a couple of those uh, available to the employees uh, for the winter. Um, so uh, obviously they're open when the parks are open, but they also have those for when the guys are out in the winter time. Uh, they have some place to use instead of running back to the park garage. Electricity, self-explanatory, professional services. Um, part of that money is uh, we pay the uh, contractor who mows the city-owned properties. Um, and you can see the other coaching certificates, uh, Williamsport Carpenters. Every now and then we run into something that we need a professional to do. So uh, that's where that money comes from. Pre professional services. Um, again, sometimes we just need, if there's a tree that, uh, or trees that are out of our capabilities as a tree crew, we'll hire someone that uh, has better equipment. I shouldn't say better equipment, uh, more specialized equipment, I should say. Uh, we'll hire them. Tree service and replanting in the event that, uh, you know, we, again, some sort of specialty uh, planting, we'll use that money. Equipment lease and rental, um, self-explanatory. Every now and then we have to do something. We don't have that piece of equipment and neither does DPW. So we'll, uh, we'll rent what we need. And the building equipment improvement and maintenance, um, that's pretty self-explanatory. So uh, we'll move on from that. Prove, uh, parks improvements. Uh, most of that is uh, ball field uh, uh, stuff that we need. Um, we have on hand the field conditioner and things like that for uh, in the event of a rain, we keep these fields going. Uh, the chalk, that's self-explanatory paint, infield mix. Sometimes we have to uh, improve a little bit. So that's what that's for. Seed and uh, then the engineered playground mulch, uh, commonly referred to as fibar, is the uh, mulch that goes in the playground for uh, safety reasons. Um, let's see, pool repairs and maintenance. Well, first of all, is there any questions on that page? Yes, this is Councilman Friedman. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, there, there were a couple of lines that um, there seemed to be noticeable differences. Um, electricity, we've spent about only half of what we budgeted, can we assume, is that because of COVID, the electricity in the park, um, you know, because the parks have been closed? Or is that due to something else? Well, we haven't turned the, the electric heat back on for the winter yet. So that will go shooting up, but some of it's also 
COVID related. Okay, well. that makes sense. Um, and the other one is the parks. Um, well, actually, there were two. The parks improvement and maintenance was that was almost halved since last year's budget, and we've already spent more this year than is budgeted for next year. Could you shed some light on why that choice was made? Oh, uh, I would think that we bought a lot of the field conditioner and those items for this season. Not, uh, of course, not being able to uh, predict the future and currently have almost all of that still in our garage. So for next year, um, we'll already have that in our possession. So um, that is for the much lower cost. Okay, that makes sense. Um, thank you for explaining. And I think you haven't, you were about to go into pool repairs and maintenance? Right. Yeah, that's another okay. one where, you know, there's $9,000 in there a year. If we're lucky, we don't have to use that $9,000. So we moved it to capital as well. Um, with having two pools that are over 60 years old, um, two pools that are 40 years old and a 30 year old pool, something's gonna go on one of them, it's gonna be expensive. So their idea there is kind of like the carousel part is maybe have a little bit of a nest egg built up. Okay, so if let's say, hopefully that doesn't happen, but let's say, you know, there is a repair, then later on in the year, we can expect to approve a budget transfer from the general fund back to this line. No, it's in no, the capital. It. Well, we end up it would just be taken directly money. out of the general fund. Or We're sorry, the capital fund, money. I mean. Yes there'd be money going into the capital fund that we do every year what what was going on in the past is usually a simple line they, they'll put eight thousand dollars in this line every year and then they'd only use four thousand so four thousand was going back to fund balance and four thousand the taxpayers were paying for money that they weren't seeing any services generated for it so what we're doing is putting money into a capital line that stays there from year to year each year at budget time we look at it what do you need is there enough there do we need to start building this up for another plan uh or what we started doing this in the water and the sewer fund back in 2015 and it's basically helped them immensely and lately we've been trying it in the general fund i see so de somewhere down the line this pool repairs and maintenance uh budget line might be closed in favor of having that money in the capital fund instead yes okay Correct. all right thank you okay any other questions on 76 through 79 the maintenance portion parks i take a motion to approve move page motion 76. Moved. so moved second Okay, Councilman Springing on the motion, Councilwoman Residenty on the second to move 76 through 79. Uh, any, any Anybody in, all in favor of that? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Okay, let's uh, let's put the, the playgrounds and the program part of this, um, if we can, if we can move through 80 through uh, through um, 87, and then we'll talk about the capital improvements part of this. Okay, for the playgrounds and rec centers, um, Pat's been doing these numbers forever. Um, he could do it off the top of his head, so I'm gonna let him go from here. Yeah, so over the last, I think I went to you guys, maybe the beginning of this year to, kind of combine some lines and so it was less confusing last year it was probably about 14 of these rec attendants uh, so I combined them all into a few different lines with different rates um, but so this is basically our summer fun program 
um, our safety town program, any help that carousels, um, you know, any help that we need with running sports or, you know, different programs and events um, comes out of these temporary services. Um, we cut it down a little bit to kind of reflect what we've been spending in the past years. Um, and then there's some overtime down there. Um, sometimes that comes up towards the end of season with kids going back to college and whatnot that someone might have to go over 40 hours. So we have a, a little bit built in. Um, and then below that's our operating supplies. Um, that's mostly used for summer fun and safety town. Um, as you see, we didn't we didn't run summer fun this year, um, so the spending's way down on that one. Uh, if you go to the next page, beaches and pools, um, for our lifeguards at thirteen dollars an hour. Um, that's because we have to stay competitive with, you know, the county, the Y, and attracting lifeguards. Um, it's expensive to get your certification. Um, and then the two recreation attendants, that would be a quad director and the two directors. Only one of them works at a time. Um, they are to those positions um, to run the swimming pools. Um, same thing with overtime there towards the end of the season with sports restarting, kids going back to school. Um, to try and keep the pools open if we have enough guards. Sometimes we will spend that overtime money. Um, equipment, that's equipment for the pools um, if anything comes up that we need. Um, and then, you know, general operating supplies, um, first aid supplies, uniforms safety stuff for the lifeguards, and then our AED contract is the last one on that page. Does anyone have any questions on those two? Yes, hi, this is Councilwoman Riley. Just for clarification, um, how many lifeguards are accounted for in this, this line? It's usually about between the five pools, about 40 to 45 we try and get more than we need um because we like to offer uh, that um because what's the point of pools if we have kids that can't swim because they can't swim um so we try and boost our number up on lifeguards rather than um down okay and about the the amount of hours designated to these positions on average is about eight weeks at four uh it's much longer than eight weeks we run from memorial day through um labor day so um memorial day till school lets out we run weekends only um at all the pools and then rec park has limited hours on the weekdays from four to eight um, but then once school opens up, all of our pools hit, um, and then they're open for um, eight hours a day, seven days a week until um, in mid-August, we shut down the smaller pools, um, usually just due to shortage of lifeguard staff. And then so we have the three big pools running until Labor Day weekend. Thank you. No problem. All right, then I guess going forward on, so we don't really have anything to do with page 83 or 84. Um, I think those are just kind of stuck in the middle of ours. Um, adult recreation, um, that's just, you know, supplies we use. Um, you have basketball nets, volleyball nets, um, equipment, things like that. Um, Forgot 80, forgot 82, Pat. Oh, sorry, 82. Oh, yeah, that's a big one. Apologize. Um, <laughs> so that is our athletic supplies for all of the youth sports programs that we run. Um, we run baseball, softball, football, cheer, soccer, uh, wrestling, and everything else in between. Um, some of them are just camps. Some of them are 
you know, full programs. Um, we do it free of cost to all the participants. Um, so that's kind of what it costs to run those. Um, we are, we've come to you, we're aggressive about seeking grants and stuff to help offset um, equipment costs, things like that. Then our league officials, um, that's basically just football, baseball, and softball umpires at this point. Um, we kind of handle the soccer in-house now, um, where we don't really need a specialized person for that. And then the temporary services line in that is, um, it's a program the Binghamton School District runs, an after school program um, that, you know, they fund it with their own money through the city. So that comes in and out through the school district. Any questions with that? Yes, this is Councilman Friedman. Mm -hmm. Um, so, uh, just to clarify the, the temporary services, it says that it's a grant. You said that's from the school district. Um, yeah. so are we, okay. And does that mean that, uh, we're paying any of that 20,000 or that's just in the budget line just because it has to come through us I, our I believe it has to come through us but Chuck can clarify that I mean I'll, I'll talk about it the city school district got a grant where they work with uh, I'll say juniors and seniors that work with kids in the elementary schools and part of the problem is they had to have someone else involved in the uh, program besides just the school district so they reached out to us and basically our portion to help them out is they're on our payroll. Uh, the school district manages the whole thing. They send me the payroll every week. We pay the payroll and then they, they submit it for the grant and reimburse us for that. So there's no money out of pocket for the city at all. So we're kind of acting as a, a placeholder for that third party that the grant requires? Yes. Exactly. Okay. Thank you. This is Councilman Riley with a follow up. This is a renewable grant. It is more than one year in existence and has been approved and funded for such. Yes, it's actually, I think it's in its third year now. This is a third or fourth. Yeah, it's been there a while. And if you talk to the school district uh, people in the I think it's run out of the athletic department by Mike Ramil and who's the other lady, Pat, that runs it? Marche Taylor. Yeah, those two. And they are so happy about the results they are getting, not only uh, from the, the kids that they're using in the school district uh, getting paid because a lot of the kids are lower income type people that can use the money. Uh, I know I met one of the kids basically who probably is a homeless kid and you know it was a way to get him money uh for food every single week um and hopefully down the road they're also going to be able to get some of these kids to be lifeguards too to help out on the other end which we failed on that attempt this year but because of covid but hopefully in the future this program will benefit us other ways too yeah, to kind of expand on what Chuck said, um, becoming a lifeguard is extremely expensive. It's about 500 bucks, 400 bucks if you do it through the Y. So we've actually gone out and one of our rec supervisors and one of our pool supervisors and had them um, go out, take the courses through the Red Cross and everything. So we can actually now offer it to these kids at cost, um, which is, you know, like $100, which goes to the Red Cross. Um, so it's going to be a unique opportunity, I think, for us to take some of these kids that we've taught to swim over the last, you know, five, six, seven, eight years, um, get them a, a chance to, you know, turn that into a paying job. And, um, and you know, the past, since I've been here, we've, it's one of the positions that we hire out of the city for. 
Um, so we're going to hopefully through this be able to start swinging those jobs back to you know city residents and we are also working with the school district to find people that would help uh, some of the lower income people pay that hundred dollars uh, we had a couple people willing to help out this year but it just never transpired yeah if we had it set up and then we weren't able to actually teach the classes because of COVID this year so Hopefully something good for next year. All right. Can you guys hit adult adult rec real quick on 85? Then we'll approve that block and we'll do this and then we'll do the senior center. Okay. Um, yeah, adult rec is just um, equipment. So, you know, we have an adult volleyball league, um, you know, net, tennis nets, um, basketball nets, things like that. Okay. Any other questions on uh, for the programs, the playground, beaches, youth, and adult rec for uh, Pat or Paul? Mr. Chairman, okay. motion to move pages 8385. Was that Councilman Riley on the second? Okay, so we have a motion uh, from Councilman Fringy and a second from Councilman Riley to move 80, 81, 82, and 85. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Anyone opposed? Okay. You guys could do the senior center, 86 and 87. Okay. okay. Um, so senior center. We ran it for a while. Yeah, um, so Senior Center, um, that is, you know, Jessica's the rec supervisor over there. Um, and then we have um, one rec attendant who kind of five days a week position there handles the custodial stuff. Um, and then the other two split up a couple hours, um, two or three days of the week, covering the front desk there, answering phones. Um, things like that covering when Jessica's at lunch. Um, and the, the, that temp service number is way down this year because they've been effectively um, laid off with the center being closed to in-person um, use right now. Everything else is pretty much the same. Um, equipment, office supplies, um, you know, general operating supplies, that would be, you know, the cleaning, um, some stuff for some programs in there. Uh, heat and electricity, um, the professional service is that um, the monthly entertainment part of it is, you know, once a month when it's open regularly, we try to bring in some type of guest speaker, um, whether it be music or, you know, a subject that the people attend might like. Um, security, elevator repair and maintenance. Um, that's just the regular contract with Otis. Um, then there's some money in there. If anything breaks down the buildings, you know, close to 100 years old, so stuff breaks down in it. Um, same thing, equipment repair and maintenance, that a lot of it time gets spent on kitchen um, equipment. And then we have some money in there to have a couple bigger events um, a few times a year where you know, we might go out and get a nicer band for a fancy dinner dance or something like that. If you have any questions with it, it's pretty straightforward. Well, that's nice. I um, mean, I you know, want to take a moment. To, they've really gone out of their way, um, especially with the center closed in person to you know, reach out to the people that you know, use it. Um, they're doing the lunches on a drive through basis and you know, they've actually gone up where everyone else has gone down. They're serving more lunches now than they did before. So they're really doing an outstanding job over there. Cool. That's, that's great. Thanks guys. Any other questions on the senior center 8687 or any questions? Um, Chairman, I'd like to move, make a motion that we accept or move the pages 86 and 87. Okay. Second. 
Okay, we've got a, a motion from Councilwoman Riley and a second from Councilman Scringy to move 86 and 87. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay. We're almost done. Uh, page 199, guys. Looks like you have a few capital items Ross Park, Ely, some pool improvements, and um, some plant street and park trees. Any, any, anything notable on, on those on 199? Um, so Ross Park is, um, yeah, that's part of the deal having the Discovery Center and the zoo up there is we invest a certain amount each year. Uh, the pools was, that's the one we talked about earlier, moving it over there. Um, I don't see the carousel stuff. No, no, that's missing. I think the mayor took that out earlier this week or earlier last week. But there's um, this is Lori. There's money left in capital from this year that hasn't been spent. There's a few thousand dollars there that should take you through next year. Uh, okay. Um, then you know we plant trees every year, um, whatnot. Also, uh, the Ely Park improvements, there's money there uh, that we do a few things for those folks. Uh, it is a city park and uh, we're trying to, uh, trying to keep it going here. And most of that money, Pat is or for Paul is for the irrigation system, hopefully to get it up and working properly. Right. Yes, I can attest that they need that. And um, a lot of people up there want to want to keep supporting Ely Parks. So I think that's, that's wise to try to keep those leagues going up there. It's a beautiful Mr. course. Chairman. It's looking good. Mr. Chairman. Yes, 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 Councilman Scurgy. Uh Thank you. Um, I don't know who can address this, either uh, Paul Parks or Chuck or some combination. Um, what's the differentiation from uh, Ely Park line improvement amounts from previous budgets in past years as it relates to this year? Because I'm operating on the assumption sure. that... I'm sorry, because I'm operating on the assumption sure. that... <laughs> Say it again. okay. I'll 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 stop. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I think Gio, it's up about thirty thousand dollars. Normally we put like seventy five hundred in there, and this year right. we got thirty seven five hundred. From from what we know from the contractors that have been up there, do we feel that's going to be enough to deal with the issues we have to? I don't I don't have that answer to be honest with you. Paul, have you talked to any of them? I have not talked to people in particular uh, companies. Uh, we recently have talked to uh, Shenango Valley State Park. They're going through a um, installation of irrigation there. And uh, we're trying to get a hold of the contractors to see if we can get somebody to give us a price. Um, we do have uh, prices on uh, the airification and top dressing and the uh, the winterized uh, the fungicide put down for winter there right uh, so we have prices for those and uh, again uh, the rest is for uh, the irrigation so we have not we don't have a solid number on the irrigation yet okay no i'm i'm glad to see that this was in, increased the extent to which it was to address that do we have a do we have a plan of attack if additional funds are necessary? Um, what the what the thought of how we might move forward on that is? I think we have to look at deal and see what the total number is. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Where do we stand? We, we have sure. some extra money. We we still have some money built up into the capital fund also to help us. I, I don't know the exact amount, but I'm going to think somewhere around twenty five thousand. Okay. No, that that that's great to know. I just you know, 
besides the fact that this is a city asset, it's also a revenue generator. So I just want to make sure that we're, um, well, you know, appropriating what we need to. And it sounds like we're moving in that direction. So I appreciate everyone's uh, push for that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Thanks, Councilman. Any other question? Questions on the capital lines for the for the parks parks department? Okay. We get a motion to approve uh, the parks department lines on 199. So moved. Second. Second. Okay, we got Councilman Scringy on the uh, motion and Councilwoman Riley on the uh, second. All in favor of approving the Parks Line Capital Improvements? Uh, Aye. 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 Any, any, anyone opposed? Okay, I think we made it through night one. Um, do we have to have a formal adjournment or do we just uh, say good night? I'll make a motion that we adjourn. Okay, thank you everyone. It was a long but I think we did good getting through this and and uh, hopefully tomorrow night will be successful as well. It wasn't seconded. Second and anybody second? You don't need a, a motion to adjourn. Oh. Okay. <laughs> well, either way we have one. So thank you all. Have a great night and we'll talk to you tomorrow. All right. Thank you. Thank you, right, Phil. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Phil. Tomorrow. Good job. Right, have a good night. Good night, everybody. Good night.